It's one of the most popular movie franchises ever. Gosh, do you think George Lucas will let me direct his next movie? And one of the most parodied. Larry Patootie, it's a mess! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Star Wars themed TV episodes. Man, this totally sucks. I should be hot! For this list, we're looking at TV episodes that reference, spoof, or pay homage to George Lucas's epic space opera. Don't worry, it's only 382 minutes. Nerd! Number 10, My Two Dads, Scrubs. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Two key themes throughout Star Wars are the struggle between good and evil, and the bonds between fathers and sons, mentors and mentees. It's about what's best for the hospital. It's about what's best for the patient. The same thing can be said about Scrubs, with Dr. Cox acting as a rebel soldier and Dr. Kelso taking the place of an Imperial officer. You're suspended. Stuck in the middle of their conflict in this season one episode is young JD, who must choose between the light side and the dark side. It's an old story, really. Good versus bad, right versus wrong, the dark side versus the light. The young doctor finally makes his choice in one of his many over-the-top fantasies, although Dr. Cox does show him that doing the right thing also means making sacrifices. <laughs> Number 9. Star Warner's Pinky and the Brain <laughs> A spin-off of Animaniacs, this series spent four seasons parodying movies and pop culture just like its parent series. Alright, who took the last diet root beer? I told you, I am not a refrigerator. I am a laboratory robot engaged in an intricate scheme of galactic domination. And in the show's final episode, they brought out the big guns, or blasters as the case may be. What do you expect, Pesto? We blasted them first! We did not! Bobby, did we blast them first? A little bit. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. See, I told ya! In just 22 minutes, Star Warners satirizes the entire Star Wars trilogy. Cranky she is. My Aunt Slappy she is. Along the way, the Warners, Good Feathers, Slappy Squirrel, and other familiar faces lampoon all the characters we know and love. Sweetheart, you must do get the big laugh. Now try! Of course, Pinky and the Brain are also there as 3 Pinkyo and Brain 2 Me Too, in a plot to take over not only the world, but also the whole galaxy. We must catch the space shuttle back to our home planet of Acme and prepare for the next millennium. Gee, Brain 2, what are we going to do in the next millennium? The same thing we do every millennium, Pinkyo. Try to take over the galaxy! Number 8. Please, Homer, don't hammer him. The Simpsons. Someone at your school has a life-threatening peanut allergy. Cool. Who is it? At some point, every schoolboy has likely pictured himself as Luke Skywalker and his principal as Darth Vader. Who says it's a dude? A principal can be a man or a woman these days. In one storyline of this Simpsons episode, it appears that Bart has finally, in season 18, gained control over Principal Skinner when he learns of his enemy's peanut allergy. Bart, Skinner's gonna be really mad at you. Yes, you might say he'll blow up. <laughs> Skinner strikes back, however, upon learning that Bart has an equally deadly aversion to shrimp. Eat shrimp and die! No, I'm allergic! Set to John Williams' epic musical score, the student and teacher clash in a lightsaber-style duel. And the result for both is every bit as tragic as Anakin Skywalker's fate. Well, maybe not quite. Kids, don't die! Number 7. Love Bites, The Venture Brothers Say hello to goodbye, Dr. Venture! Team Venture comes close to winning Best Group Costume, with Dean in Princess Leia's gold bikini, Dr. Venture in a Jedi cloak, and Brock in a hairy Chewbacca getup. But Hank has to go and screw it up by dressing as the Batman. I am the Bat. Yes, yes, you're the Bat. And the Bat is the reason we didn't take Best Group Costume, mister! This becomes the least of their problems, however, when Baron Underbite kidnaps Dean and plans to make him his bride. We will be married in some mornings and- What? Ew! I'm not marrying you! 
Thus, the Ventures partner up with a group of underground rebels to save the princess while cleverly making fun of pedophilia. Pretty sure that kid's underage too, though I'm not sure that's illegal. Hitler, and of course, Star Wars. Goodbye, Ventures. Walk with God. Come back and visit us sometime. You're always welcome in Ottola. Number six, the stars of Star Wars, The Muppet Show. You're, you're Mark Hamill. Huh? No, no, no. Uh, he's my cousin. The same year Frank Oz voiced Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker, R2-D2, and C-3PO hosted this episode of The Muppet Show. Listen, pal, we're on a mission. There's no way we're going to get involved in any third-rate variety show. <laughs> Completely dazed by the strange planet they've landed on, the stars of Star Wars commandeer the swine trek to rescue Chewbacca. I'm Luke Skywalker. My friends and I have just borrowed your spaceship so we can rescue our friend Chewbacca the Wookiee. The episode also features Gonzo the Great as Darth Nader, Miss Piggy as Princess Leia, C-3PO tap dancing, and Luke performing alongside his cousin Mark Hamill. Oh, not me. I'll go get my cousin. Even over 30 years after it aired, this bizarre crossover is still awesome and hilarious to watch, and not nearly as uncomfortable as the Star Wars Holiday Special. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess that uh, wraps it up. Uh, we'll see you next time on The Muppet Show! Number 5. A New Hope, That 70s Show. I am so excited about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Fuzzy man, it's Star Wars. <laughs> Kids today can only imagine what it was like to see Star Wars when it first came out. Star Wars is a limited engagement! In this season one episode of That 70s Show, Eric and his band of rebels experiences the phenomenon in the theater. I'm bored. If you're bored, you should go see Star Wars. All the guys are immediately obsessed, even if the film doesn't have any space jugs. So, Eric, you're gonna get yourself some Star Wars pajamas now? <laughs> the Star Wars theme further ties into the story as Eric worries Donna will turn to the dark side and dump him for a guy with scoliosis he beat up in elementary school. David Milbank? David Milbank, he's got scoliosis and asthma. <laughs> Costumed dreams ensue. You guys just gotta come over the dark side. <sighs> they have free food. Number four. Phineas and Ferb, Star Wars, Phineas and Ferb. When Disney acquired the rights to Star Wars, the creators of Phineas and Ferb jumped at the opportunity to parody A New Hope. We received your transmissions, so you have the Death Star plans? And they delivered one of the most unique Star Wars send-ups ever, making Phineas and Ferb Luke Skywalker's neighbors. Hey Luke! Phineas! Ferb! What's up guys? And telling the classic story from their perspective. You can look but you're never gonna find a better place to be Than this little slice of heaven tucked between the jungling waste and the big dune sea it's one great laugh after another, with Perry the Platypus as a rebel spy, Candace as a stormtrooper trying to bust rebels, this is why I joined the Empire in the first place, and Dr. Doofenshmirtz as the Sith Lord who gave the Death Star a fatal design flaw. Well, yeah, I designed it to be a nutcracker. Here, look, look, look at this. Uh, if only this were canon. <laughs> Put a sock in it, fuzzball. <laughs> Number three. For a few paintballs more, community. Well, if it's a war you want, it's a war you will lose. No show satirizes movies, television, and pretty much anything better than community. In other words, it seems we've left the Western motif and entering more of a Star Wars scenario. Oh. I know, I wish it happened sooner too. In for a few paintballs more, Dan Harmon finally paid tribute to Star Wars, as well as the spaghetti westerns that inspired the epic space opera. Playing Star Wars is worn out and immature with Abed channeling Han Solo and an ice cream mascot assuming the Darth Vader role. On your knees. No Greendale student can be allowed to win this game. It's an all-out paintball war to save Greendale from the wrath of the rival City College. Brilliantly directed by Joe Russo, ingeniously written by Hilary Winston, and wonderfully acted by the whole cast, 
This cinematic episode is the very definition of epic comedy. Well, I'm out. We lost. See you at Denny's? Denny's is for winners. Number two, Robot Chicken Star Wars, Robot Chicken. The early seasons of Robot Chicken referenced Star Wars so many times that a whole episode dedicated to the franchise was inevitable. You have a collect call from... Darth Vader. Seth Green and crew explore many scenarios one would never think of. Like, how did the Emperor react when Darth Vader told him that the Death Star exploded? What do you mean they blew up the Death Star? Both compiling previous Star Wars shorts and offering several new ones, this Emmy-nominated special is Robot Chicken at its best, with just the right blend of smart and lowbrow humor. What's that happened to you? What's that burn your face? Ah! 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 Any Penny! What's that happened to you? Ah! And in true Star Wars fashion, the episode even inspired a trilogy. Before we light speed over to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It's, it's Dark Vader. Who dares stand in Doc Vader's way? I have you now, Macaroni Mouth. Don't be so sure. May the pasta be with me. Yes. I was making the stars fall, so no babies can have any wishes. Awfully forward for a lady to touch a young man's hand, you know. Number one, Blue Harvest, Family Guy. This is the story of Star Wars. Let's begin with part four. Not since Spaceballs has there been a more detailed, well thought out, and loving take on Star Wars than this masterful season six premiere of Family Guy. Yeah, but didn't Robot Chicken already do this three months ago? Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Chris. I, I don't think people are even aware of that show's existence. Packed wall to wall or galaxy to galaxy with jokes, Blue Harvest couldn't be more perfectly cast with Stewie as Darth Vader. Um, actually, that's me. I made a Darth duty. Herbert as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Luke, wait, it's too dangerous. Get your fat space ass back here. And Meg as the garbage monster. Sure, Robot Chicken might have done this first, but Family Guy did it even better. Man, I wish I could listen to some Tatooine Wind and Fire right now. Throw in the equally hilarious follow-up episodes, Something 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 Dark Side. I'm, I'm just going on record as saying I'm not comfortable with this. And it's a trap, and you have a trilogy that will have any fuzzball laughing it up. Can we at least put together a press release that says I'm resigning of my own accord to pursue other evil projects? Do you agree with our list? Maybe you're right. What's your favorite Star Wars themed TV episode? <laughs> For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. If you will not join me, then I must destroy you.